let's get this show on the road. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. This is a forum to discuss what regulations Seattle should require for operation of for-profit teen dances in dance halls. As you know, we currently have an ordinance called the Teen Dance Ordinance. Uh, there's a draft proposal, there's a proposal that, the, um, uh, that has been submitted that is called the All Ages Dance Ordinance. They have two quite different provisions uh, and uh, in talking with the Downtown Residence Council a few weeks ago, uh, I offered to uh, provide them an opportunity uh, to let us know uh, what the issues they have uh, with the All Ages Dance Ordinance before this matter comes to Council. We scheduled this hearing for a time when the litigation concerning the Teen Dance Ordinance would have been resolved. and. Uh, the Teen Dance Ordinance had been challenged as being unconstitutional. The court has now decided there are no constitutional issues in the Teen Dance Ordinance to be concerned about. It's a matter of public policy, uh, and um, so it comes back to the City Council to decide. You have in front of you, and um, are on your seat, you should have copies of this blue uh, public forum comment form uh, this forum is not set up uh, as, a, as a public hearing. The council member who's going to be discussing in whose committee is going to have responsibility for this ordinance is Nick Licata, and he will have a public hearing, at least one, uh, on this ordinance. Uh, the purpose of this forum is to hear from groups of, of uh, community councils and other citizens that have expressed concerns that may go into uh, amendments to the ordinance, uh, to either one of the ordinance. So I know there's not time for all of you to be heard. I will hear from the panels uh, that I've got scheduled, uh, and then um, we'll probably have an hour for open mic. So if you do want to uh, have a chance to make a statement, in addition to your written comment, um, there is a, there's a sign-up sheet for folks, and we'll have at least an hour, probably at the end of the meeting, uh, for that. Uh, and then, but if it, it would be helpful if you'd please sign in because uh, there will be another public hearing, and so there will be an, an opportunity for everybody to be heard along the line. The other, th the other items that uh, you should have on your chairs are uh, a yellow sheet that outlines some of the differences between the Teen Dance Ordinance and the All Ages Dance Ordinance, and has some city staff comments and recommendations uh, based on the discussions that we had on these two ordinances uh, a year ago and on the uh, city staff comments uh, that were submitted in the, in the litigation. And those city staff comments are also on the uh, poster behind me and on this orange sheet. So you have a chance to look at those. I did not ask city staff uh, to participate in this panel. It's an opportunity to hear from the community councils uh, and folks uh, not, not in the city family. So our um, agenda for today is to start off with the invited panels, uh, to call them up two or three at a time. Uh, they've, uh, they're going to be sitting in this configuration because uh, the uh, television station has asked uh, that uh, they sit in this way. It's a little easier for them to, to do the, uh, the filming. Uh, and um, uh, when we've heard from uh, probably half a dozen to eight different panels, uh, then we'll probably take a break and then have open mic uh, for others that want to be heard. So we'll start with uh, the Downtown Resident Council, who started off this debate for me. Uh, and if you'd uh, go over to those seats and uh, give, give us your names, and we'll ask you some of the lead questions we're here to discuss. Uh, my name's Ed Marquand. I'm Vice President of the Downtown Seattle Residence Council. And I'm Mike Longyear. I'm the treasurer of the Downtown Residence Council. 
Uh, the Downtown Seattle Residents Council was formed about a year ago, uh, kind of ironically tonight, because but, uh, it was formed because as individuals, the downtown residents were unable to get any response from the city over noise and public safety concerns over the existing music clubs downtown. And uh, we are also concerned with long-term planning issues, things like the viaduct replacement, monorail, so on, and public safety, um, um, street environment, those kinds of issues. But the issue that is sort of a hot button issue for us is the uh, continuing lack of responsibility that music clubs take for their presence in the neighborhoods. And our neighborhoods consist of the International District, Pioneer Square, Denny Triangle, the Downtown Core, and Belltown. We, uh, I've lived downtown for 24 years now, and there were plenty of music clubs when I moved there. And every year, it seems to get a little bit worse, a little bit worse, a little bit worse. Partly because of the number of clubs, the volumes that are popular today, the size of the amplification systems, the hours of the clubs, and more than anything, I think, it's the lack of the lack of consideration on the part of the club owners to admit and realize that they are part of a larger community. And that's our chief objection. Now, from our perspective, the clubs attract people from neighborhoods outside of the downtown. So the people who come to our neighborhoods in the evenings essentially are out for a party. That's fine. But what has happened in the last 15 years is that the party has moved to the street. And so instead of being in, in well-managed, um, uh, controlled businesses that participate in the community, more and more of them are events that um, where, the, where the barrier between the inside of the club and the outside of the club is blurred. And to us, that's really a serious issue. To the people who go to the clubs, uh, it probably seems like nobody really lives downtown. Nobody really, you know, anybody who lives downtown deserves this sort of treatment. And that's really um, offensive to us. And I hope that we can work something out. I spend a lot of time traveling nationally and internationally. I go to many cities where there are thriving music club environments in residential neighborhoods. And they figured out ways to make it work for the businesses, for the music club businesses, and for the residents. Seattle is a long, long, long way away from that kind of uh, consideration and cooperation. And I hope that uh, we can work together to figure out some sort of common ground. Mike? I also live downtown. I've, I've lived downtown for 15 years, and as I commented, it, the, the, uh, the, the character has changed, and one thing that's changed significantly is the uh, density, urban density of downtown residents. And uh, it's a significant tax base for the city, and part of uh, what our organization is about is asking the city and elected officials to take a more holistic approach to the management of the city and that goes to the quality of life and the uh, safety, public safety, uh, health and construction regulations uh, downtown. And that of course plays out into the way that businesses are, are operated and the way that they interact with the community there. Uh, downtown uh, has been had the fastest growth uh, but it's interesting to note that the number of police officers is basically the same since I believe 1978? 73. 73. And so that the, the impact of the, the clubs is that it brings in all these people uh, in the evening, nights, whatever, uh, and the, uh, there's more opportunity, if you will, to interact with residents in, in what turns out to be a ne negative way.
Okay, young people. We know you can dance. This meeting will be at recess for 10 minutes. I'm glad they're not my constituency. <laughs> Margaret? No, I mean, it, okay. you're testifying to the council. OK. okay. Um, okay, we're uh, back in order. And uh, Mike, did you had you finished what you wanted to say? Just that it, that the it, it's important to realize that we are all part of a, a bigger community. No one is saying no to music, no to dancing, but we are saying that any uh, music event, uh, clubs that are hosting music events need to take into consideration the impact that they have on the surrounding community. It's uh, when, when you have you know a couple hundred kids uh, in your front yard, it, it, it has an impact on the quality of your life. And so we're looking for the city to set the, some standards, set some guidelines that are going to uh, protect the citizens that reside in the community. and. Uh, I, th I think the other thing that uh, is important to remember is that this is a, a holistic approach that we're hoping to take on this. 
and that what happens with the teen dance ordinance also uh, interacts and affects what, what's happening with the Liquor Control Board and other regulations mm -hmm. throughout the state, county, and city. It's not an isolated set of laws and that the city council needs to step back, look at the entire picture of what the impact is on, of these events in relation to the other laws that are, are being reviewed and acted on at this time. Uh, I think it's, it's one of the roles of government is to say, let's stop and wait and see what the impact is rather than uh, reacting to uh, outbursts and, and pressure tactics and that this, is, this does have a big impact on the quality of life and so the city council needs to spend some time looking at the issues. I, I almost think it needs like an environmental impact statement. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's have Dan Satterberg coming forward, please, to speak for the King County prosecutors. Thank you very much. No, this is not a question and answer session. This is a chance for uh, folks to put their, provide their input to city council. Thank you, Councilmember Pageler. That's a tough act to follow. Um, I'm Dan Satterberg. I'm here on behalf of Norm Mailing, who's the King County prosecuting attorney. You know, it reminds me of a, there was a song about 15 years ago by the Beastie Boys called You Gotta Fight for Your Right to Party. And uh, I think that's maybe what encourages people to come here tonight and, and you know, make their statement. And I, I, I admire the, the spunk and, and the spark of, of civic uh, mindedness that may have prompted that. I do think, though, that you got to be careful what you ask for and what you fight for, because I think in a, in a uh, free-for-all ordinance, like the all-ages dance ordinance, that the kids are the ones who are the losers. Uh, the adults are not going to suffer, but it's the kids who, who are going to be mingling with adults who are going to end up on the wrong end of, of the tragic circumstance. And that's really what brings us here. The prosecuting attorney's position on this in support of the present ordinance is really shaped by our experience, both in juvenile court where we deal with the tragic aftermath of people who are uh, hurt at uh, raves and at uh, out of control parties. We deal with it in adult court when we deal with um, felony sex offenders who are predatory in nature and who try to find young people and try to make them vulnerable through alcohol and drugs and then take advantage of them. We see the tragic end of this. We don't see the party end. We see the tragic end and it's, it's all there. And the thing that concerns us about this, I mean, we know there's unlicensed underground events going on all the time. We see that we see those. Uh, and, and that those events will continue to pose a danger to kids regardless of which city licensing regulation is, is passed. But the danger signs that we've seen in, in the underground events, the mixed ages, alcohol and drugs, all night duration, all of those things are permitted by the proposed policy uh, in the all ages dance ordinance. We just think it's pretty common sense that adults partying with kids all night long where alcohol is bound to show up uh, is, is trouble. It's bad news and it's bad news for the kids. And it would be hard to explain, I think, that that's the city policy, that the city is putting its seal of approval on an event that, uh, that allows that to happen. We agree with the uh, comments made that are posted up there, the city staff recommendations. There's three particular principles that, that I would want to uh, reemphasize. First of all, we think that in these situations, that kids and adults should party separately. That means, you know, all ages means that anybody who's 12 years old to, to 50 are in the same venue. They're, in, they're sharing the same um, kinds of experiences, which will, I think, include access to alcohol. Anytime you have a weekend party and you have adults there, even if it's not sold on the premises, even if the Liquor Control Board remembers that control is its middle name, uh, you're going to have alcohol. It's going to be out in the parking lot, it's going to be smuggled in, and kids are going to be given alcohol or sold alcohol by adults who have it. It's just, it's a certainty, uh, and, and I think it, it endangers the kids. Uh, Should the parents be responsible for the children? You know, there's a lot of teen, there are a lot of teen dances being put on throughout the county. Uh, most of them are sponsored by churches and schools and parent groups, and when those things happen, uh, and they're outside the, the ambit of this ordinance, they're put on and they're staffed and they're secured by people who care about the welfare of the kids who are there, who know the kids by name. When you have a situation where it's for profit and where the security is provided, not by a police officer, by, but by somebody who's an employee who is, quote, trained in crowd control, whatever that means, uh, all of a sudden there's not concern about the individual kids who are involved. I think, yeah, ideally the parents would be involved. All right. If yeah. 
we'll, we I, will close the meeting if there's shouting out. So let's go ahead with the The, the other concern that I think comments. exacerbates the dangers of mixing kids, adults, and alcohol and drugs is that the all ages dance ordinance purports to do away with the readmission fee, which means that it essentially encourages and allows trips to the parking lot, trips to the back of the building, trips to who knows where, and then to come back to the venue. The present mm -hmm. ordinance discourages that, and I think that's an essential element of the present ordinance. It's also our belief that the party should not go on all night. Two o'clock is the present cap set by the teen dance ordinance. There's a lot of things that happen after two o'clock. Uh, but for teenagers, most of them are bad things. There's not much good that happens after 2 o'clock. And the problem that's going to happen is that once the, the nightclubs close in town and there's one of these all-ages dances going on all night, everybody who was drinking at those clubs is going to come to the all-ages club. And pretty soon it's going to be, uh, you're going to have a lot of intoxicated people there who were drinking at another establishment and then it closed down. Third, I think the security is critical. I think there need to be police presence both inside and outside because they will be concerned for the welfare of the kids involved and they'll be able to do something when they see a kid who is so intoxicated that they are ripe pickings for a predatory uh, adult. Uh, they'll be able to, to maintain some control. Um, you know, I think it's really curious that in this city you have to be 17 to see an R-rated movie but that this proposed, proposed city policy would allow somebody who's 12 to go in and dance all night with adults who've been drinking. It just doesn't make any sense at all. I think the segregation of adults from minors is essential and it's done for the safety of the kids. Uh, not so, so I think in the, in the final analysis, there's enough dangers in the, in the world for kids. It is hard to explain a city policy that encourages even more dangers uh, to be done with the seal of approval of the city government. So I'm happy Thank to answer you, you your questions. Okay. Thank you. Uh, John Simpson and John Jones. If you hear John Simpson and John Jones. And I don't think you gentlemen know each other, but I think you perhaps have some perspectives in common. John Simpson is a veteran of Parents in Arms, uh, which was the group that was responsible uh, for the original teen dance ordinance. And John Jones is from Acorn. And I think you both have uh, a, a religious perspective and some religious leadership uh, to, to bring to bear on this topic. And John Simpson, you wanna, do you care who goes first? Okay, John Jones, thank hello. you. Hello, my name is John Jones and I'm representing Seattle Acorn, the Association of Community for Reform Now. I'm against the all-age dance ordinance. And the reason why I'm against it is because, as an adult and as a father of a teenage child, I don't believe that I should be able, that I would want to be in the same environment, partying and dancing with my 15-year-old son all night long. I just think that is outrageous because I believe that I believe in a teen dance ordinance for teenagers. Teenagers are people who are between the ages of 14 and 18 that are in high school with high school ID that is current and they're all within three or four years of being the same age. I believe that when you have grown men and grown women around children, it's not equal. It just isn't. It's intimidating because you got 20 year old guys and 15 year old guys, who has the advantage? What if a fight break out? I just don't think it's fair and I don't think it's right. I believe that people who are 19 and 20 years old, they're college age. They're young adults. If you want to, you can. There are people. It's All right. Please people, respect the person who's got the mic. He has no respect. Um, People who are 19 and 20 years old are college age. They're young adults ready to go on to the next step in their life. To go into a place around 15 and 16 year old kids for a 20 year old adult, it's a step backwards. I think it's regressing when they should be going the other way and becoming an adult. I believe that children, teenagers, should be able to have an environment to where they can party and have fun that is controlled. One of the resources of teenagers is that teenagers have parents. Parents is an immediate resource 
with teen clubs. You can tell a teenager's parents that this child is misbehaving and their parent can do something about it. You have all age ordinances. You got, what happens when a situation, you got a 30 year old man uh, hanging out with 15, 16, 17 year old young ladies. That's unacceptable in this society. That is morally wrong. And it should not be accepted in a place where children should be able to go out and enjoy themselves all night. Mm -hmm. How can a parent relax knowing that anyone can come in that place and will be there? It's no different than them being on the streets. The purpose of taking the kids off the street and putting them into a teen place is for them to be around people their own ages where it's controlled environment and safety is very, very important. And I just don't think we can overlook safety. So I'm against the all age ordinance. I believe that teenagers and high school students should be allowed to enjoy themselves and they should be able to enjoy themselves by themselves. Grown people just don't need to be around teenagers. And as for the alcohol, the alcohol would not be a factor if you limit the age. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Simpson, thank you for coming. I hope that I can say what I want to say without being interrupted because it's going to be very good. <laughs> One issue that we should consider today is do we destroy an ordinance and replace it with another one? I believe that we have an excellent example of a better solution. When the wise leaders such as Jefferson, Madison, and Franklin were confronted with concern that the new constitution was inadequate, they bent to the task of amending it, but not to destroy it and write another. They realized that even a new work of men would have imperfect factors because it was put forth. I knew of those who wrote the present ordinance. There were among them some very wise persons participating, just like our recent federal judge that passed away just recently. He helped search the streets for a run, for a walk, uh, throwaway kid, 14 years old, as a result of lack of regulations. Of that was course, Judge Bill Dwyer who, who helped Bill write Dwyer, this ordinance. Yes, Bill Dwyer. No one can attack his, uh, uh, his record. Even Jesse Helms passed or removed his <laughs> uh, hold on the confirmation. Of course, my son-in-law went back there and told him how Dwyer had walked the streets trying to help find a young fellow who had been enticed by Holderman's to the vicinity of a teenage club where they spiked the punch and so forth. That boy now is saved, but he was kidnapped too and taken to a state that did not have, did not have the law that you couldn't commit without permission. He went to a boarding school, came through, graduated, finished law school, fifth out of over 550 people. He was worth saving. Every one of you are worth saving. I seriously doubt that any new uh, ordinance is total, would be totally unflawed. I am convinced that a new ordinance will not be perfect. Why? Because we also, we always consider this humanly constructed. Our lives are challenged by ignorance that can partially overcome, be overcome by education. But stupidity, that creates foolish moments, that problem more difficult to overcome. And we have greed and shameless greed. Now this is the baby. We have greed and shameless greed constantly cloaked in many dangerous forms. That has never been controlled. That is the most dangerous problem we must consider today. Greed, shameless greed, exploitation. An ordinance must have protection against the exploitation of our youth. The ordinance must contain the power to keep drugs and intoxicating beverages from the premises. That means the city budget must provide enough dollars to police the inside and the outside in order to disallow leaving and then returning from a stash outside. We all know what a stash outside is, don't we? I'm only 86, but I still remember it. All 
also a patrol to keep those who try to surf the area for pickups of young boys and girls. And above all, the ordinance should provide protection for the same shameless greed on the part of any of the operators. Now, there's nothing that I've said here that you can possibly, from your heart, object to. Because any young person who is led by an older person can be enticed. This 14-year-old boy was tall for his, son, his age. And he went along with some 16, 17-year-old. He didn't want Sam just 14. Did any of you when you were 14 that not, I mean, take pleasure in admitting that you weren't when you could run around with someone older? Let's take into consideration that we're all for each other. It isn't what I want that's more important than what you want. We all want one thing. That's a decent life while we're here on earth. And we'll disagree where we're going afterwards. <laughs> but we have the responsibility, one for the other, to do away with any shameless greed. And we have the responsibility to, to help educate because without a decent education, you don't have a Chinese chance in hell. Now, I've used that expression not as a big expression, but because they're the largest. They're the largest populated country there is. And if they were going through the pearly gates, it'd take a long time. So, if anyone here wants to know a personal experience on this, I'll see you at any place and I'll tell you exactly what will take place if we don't have a decent ordinance that does away with shameless greed and does away with trying to change things with just loud voices. I don't talk real loud. But I have gone into action. Thank you. Well Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Thank you, both of you. Um, is Josh Ayala here from the Vera Project? Josh? Good evening. Um, you got a I'd, fan club. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank you for presenting this event and allowing me the opportunity after just calling you. Um, yeah, 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 you have to pull the mic up. There we go. Or pull your chair up to the mic either way. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. I, I asked uh, Josh to participate because I think that sometimes the fact that the, uh, that the teen dance ordinance applies to for-profit groups is sort of lost in the discussion. Uh, there's, uh, it does not apply to church-sponsored or not-for-profit or school-sponsored or city-sponsored events, and Josh has been very instrumental in expanding those events. Right, I'm the chairman of the board of directors for the Vera Project, which is an all-ages music organization um, that's a non-profit, and we provide opportunities for young people to get involved with producing events as well as performing at them. Um, as they are not inherently evil, <laughs> contrary to popular belief. Um, currently, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on currently in the city that the city's providing, um, and then talk about the Teen Dance Ordinance a little bit, how it's affected nonprofits. Uh, and as we all know, there's school and extracurricular activities, um, many different sports, or you can argue. Uh, not, not by going home and arguing with your parents, but um, joining speech and debate teams and wearing suits like I did in high school. Um, and then there's the parks department, um, and they actually on their website state specifically that um, they're the leading public agency for developing programs for youth ages 11 to 21, uh, and they serve an average of 2,100 young people each week, which is pretty awesome. 
and that's the leading branch of the city um, working with that age group. Uh, and right now, there are 54,000 uh, 10 to 19 year olds. So that's, they're serving a pretty small and narrow group of people there. But um, that's a great step in a, uh, the right direction. Um, currently, the Vera Project presents um, all ages music. It, and it's truly all ages. Anyone of any age can come down. So it's a little bit different. But um, we do provide um, opportunities for young people. Um, the Seattle Arts Commission is also providing a few different uh, opportunities for young people. So you should look at their website as well. Um, in terms of the teen dance ordinance, uh, I've been working with nonprofits for quite a while in terms of presenting youth music opportunities, beginning with the, uh, the Velvet Elvis. Does anyone here remember the Velvet Elvis? <laughs> they were around for seven years presenting um, all ages music, and that was primarily volunteer run as well. Uh, as we all know, there's not a lot of money to be made unless you're doing a very large scale event like uh, um, a giant rave or something in the show box. Um, so that's why uh, we're organizing nonprofits to present these events and get young people out and involved in access to music. Um, essentially, the Teen Dance Ordinance has put monetary restrictions um, in place which inhibit people from presenting music events, mainly by the fact that we have to hire um, off-duty police officers who are not r truly accountable um, in terms of having to work for organizations like ours. Um, there's no place in the police department that I can go to and say, I want to hire an off-duty police officer other than the front desk, and, and that person will be held accountable, and they have to come and show up at our event. The other thing is that uh, the insurance policies are pretty exorbitant. So for small local community organizations or, or private organizations to organize an event, it becomes pretty costly. Um, and that's another reason why we've cho chosen the nonprofit route in order to present music. Um, in terms of the future, we're gathered here to try and figure out how we can provide safe music events for young people. And that's really what it comes down to. There's lots of perspectives involved, and um, it's up to the policymakers to make those decisions. Uh, in terms of the All Ages Dance Ordinance versus the Teen Dance Ordinance. And uh, so I urge all of you to use this opportunity to speak up as well as contact your city council member and the mayor and let them know how you feel about young people getting involved in music. It takes a phone call like mine to our council member here um, to be able to speak out and let your voice be heard. So. Uh, actually, tomorrow, is it the parks, the uh, committee meeting that is going to consider funding your project? Um, I, bl I believe yes, yeah. The okay, we're, we're looking forward to that coming to full council for approval. Yeah, um, we've already been told that the Seattle Arts Commission, due to the city budget cuts and the $50 million budget gap for next year, that the Seattle Arts Commission is going to um, probably have to slash our entire budget for the Vera project. So also let your council members know that you support all ages music and uh, that you'd like to see the Vera Project continue providing that access to young people. Okay. Thank you very much, Josh. Thanks for having me. Uh, next, uh, Casey Jones and Lane Ross from the Pioneer Square Community Association and Catherine Stafford, uh, Stanford from the Downtown District Council. Uh, okay. I don't know whether you had more people with this group, just the two of you. Okay. Councilmember Pageler, thank you so much for this opportunity. My name is Casey Jones. I'm the executive director of the Pioneer Square Community Association. I represent not only the residents and businesses of Pioneer Square, but also the nightclub industry in our neighborhood. Nightclubs are something that make Pioneer Square unique. 
and special. And we are as much uh, in support of the nightclubs there as we are the daytime businesses, the art galleries, the rug places, all of that. Uh, to me, this debate boils down to three main issues. And I don't know that I'm as schooled in the differences between the tea dance ordinance and the all ages dance ordinance, but I think it, if we focus on three fundamental things, we can probably get through this debate. Um, first of which, obviously, is the safety of young people. Uh, we don't have to look as far back as Mardi Gras last year to have a pretty stunning example of when young people and adults and alcohol mixed to create something that I think this community is, uh, one, embarrassed about, two, saddened by, and three, looking for ways in which to ensure that this kind of tragedy doesn't happen again. So whatever changes are made, they must be made with safety of young people first in mind. Um, the second thing is Pioneer Square is a community and people live there, believe it or not. About 2,000 people, it's not much. But the future of Pioneer Square, the future of downtown, and I think you can even extend that to the region, will be based on our ability to house more families and house more people. The nightclubs in Pioneer Square and I think in downtown present a challenge. I can't tell you how many times I've heard someone tell me, well, if you didn't want to hear the airplanes, you wouldn't have uh, bought a home by the airport. I don't know that I buy that. Pioneer Square is a diverse place and it can accommodate all people, residents and businesses, daytime and nighttime. But these things need to coexist and it's been said before and I want to say it again, people live in my neighborhood. I lived in my neighborhood for a while. It's loud, it's sometimes dangerous, it doesn't feel safe for people of all ages. So the second thing that we have to focus on is livability. Think about if you uh, were to take Mardi Gras 2001 and put it in your neighborhood, wherever that neighborhood is, it would frighten you just as it frightened us. So that whatever changes are made here have to focus second on livability. And the third thing, it's been talked about a little bit here before, the third thing has to do with public resources. The number of liquor control agents, the number of police officers, the number of firemen and firewomen uh, is diminishing. And so I think that the responsible thing for us to do is consider that when we're looking at a change in the ordinance or a replacement. What will that do to our public resources that we depend upon? Should we be sending out an entire precinct of police officers to a club when things get out of hand? I don't think so. I'd like that police officer or those police officers to be at my home uh, if there's an intruder or if someone's really in trouble. So the third piece is what does this ordinance do or what will this change do on public resources? There are a couple of things in the All Agents Dance Ordinance that I think the staff recommendations address. First of which is the hours of operation. For us to survive as a community, and that's Pioneer Square, even downtown, we have to be sensitive to the fact that people sleep, and most of us sleep um, at night. <laughs> if there aren't any restrictions on the hours of operation, uh, the impact on residents will be measurable, as it is today. There is a noise ordinance on the books. It's nearly impossible for the police to enforce, so they don't. So the people that live in my neighborhood are subjected to uh, very loud noise. And I, I felt a little old when all the dancing was going on, but I'm not that old. The second thing that I'm worried about is minimum age, no minimum age. It simply seems careless to me to mix adults and young people in an environment where alcohol may be a part. And we might say that, well, that's what liquor control's for. There simply aren't enough liquor control agents in this state, let alone in this city, to be able to deal with that mix, that very potent uh, mix. Uh, they had all the liquor agents in Pioneer Square for Mardi Gras 2002, and it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. There are only 30 of them, and they worked around the clock to make sure that our 
one small community was safe. I could imagine those resources being taxed even more if we have a proliferation of events that are in all hours and all across the city. So I, I ask you to consider minimum age. And finally, I'm a new father, so I think about these things a little bit differently than I might, might have when I was not a father. But um, there was reported in a, in a weekly magazine that criminal background checks uh, would be required of operators. Well, that's not true. The all aged stance ordinance says that it may be uh, done, criminal background check. I think that's a little risky. I think that's a little risky for our young people. They deserve a lot more than that. Finally, I want to talk about um, what it might mean to our community if uh, and I go back to Mardi Gras and think about the tragedy and devastation that occurred there. You know, we took a whole bunch of steps and spent nearly $800,000 on police services for Mardi Gras 2002, and I still saw young people in our neighborhood. I believe young people deserve safe places to go. I do. Thank you. <laughs> but I think it needs to have some controls, and the all age and stance ordinance seems far too wide open uh, for me. I wouldn't send my son there. I would, I would not get sleep at night thinking my son was in an unsafe place. Thank, Thank you. you. Catherine? Yes. My name is Catherine Stanford, and I'm the chair of the Downtown District Council, and that's the neighborhood council that represents the five neighborhoods that make up downtown, kind of similar to um, the representation that Ed has for the Residence Council. And that's Pioneer Square, the Denny Triangle, uh, Belltown, the Commercial Core, and um, the International District. And the group of us meet on a regular basis and kind of talk about what our priorities are and what we want to look at and how we want our neighborhoods, the five neighborhoods downtown, to look and, and feel and, and what we want um, for livability in those areas. The district council is made up um, of people who live and work downtown. It's made up of small businesses, large businesses, property owners, um, human services, and we all come together and again we talk about what, what do we want our downtown to, to look like and feel like for us. And um, the, the top priority this year has been public safety and I'm sure that it will continue to be public safety. And we really look at, at legislation when it comes up, and we really want to encourage the city council to uh, ha have legislation that protects the, the livability issues in the downtown area. So that's why I'm coming to speak tonight to, to thinking about some of the things that I've heard and some of the, the problems associated with uh, some of the venues that have happened in the recent times. Um, we also, uh, are tracking the budget real closely because like the rest of the neighborhoods we want um, our fair share of, of the city's resources and I think anything that comes up that, that might have a negative impact on that. Um, Ed mentioned the, the uh, level of police that we have in the downtown area for really a very dense areas is quite limited and to think that you know those, those resources would be taken up by um, tracking through venues that are, that are unsafe or to get police calls is an important thing for us to look at. The, I think, too, what we talked about is that the, uh, the downtown, those five neighborhoods, really have, at this point, at least a disproportionate share of, um, of these types of venues, and so that's why we're taking a hard look at it. So the, the things that we would like the city council to, um, to really take a serious look at in consideration of this ordinance or other ordinances that may follow would be um, consideration to what, what level of security is needed. Um, currently it's one, one uh, security per 100 um, attendees and we think we need to kind of look at what's happened in the past, what kind of police calls have been made and what kind of force has been uh, required to, um, to subdue some of these activities that really have a very negative impact on people that, that want to live downtown. Um, and we also would like to look at the permit process and make sure that there's adamate, um, excuse me, adequate time for background checks. Um, you know, we're not saying how long we think it is, but we think these things really need to be looked at. And, um, and we want to make sure that the promoters are held accountable. 
Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of benefits for everyone, but um, we want to make sure that there's accountability and that there's remedial action um, very quickly with people that are irresponsible uh, and that, um, that there are also standards that, um, that apply to these that would apply to any of the adult venues as well. So I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Now, I have uh, two more panels that will get us out of the downtown into some of the other neighborhoods, and then uh, we'll probably take a couple minutes break so we can squirm a bit and maybe find seats, uh, and, and then we'll have uh, folks that have signed up uh, for additional testimony. May so, I say one more thing? Yes, I'm sir. sorry. I don't know a lot about the Vera project, but I just want to commend Josh and, and that project. And, um, you know, if I can put a plug in for funding that program, it's absolutely what this, uh, rather than talk about, I think, although it's important for us to talk about how many security and what the fee is and all the mechanics of the profitability of something like that, we should be focusing on projects like that even more so young people have constructive places to go and dance. This isn't about dancing. It's not about that at all. At least I don't think it is. So, Josh, uh, my hat's off to you. And if there's any way I can. Well, it, it may be just you may have to pass that hat that's off, and <laughs> and get the contributions. Good, Josh, sign him up. Uh, from uh, the East Precinct Crime Prevention, Art Hafeen and uh, Thurston Muskelly from the Central Neighborhood District Council. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for uh, inviting me here. My name is Thurston D. Muskelly, and I'm president of Central Area District Council. I was very upset with the demonstration that was held in here today. Um, I was in the Korean War, and I asked one of my partners back there, is this what I fought for? Is this what I lead my life on the line for? Yes. I don't, I don't care nothing about your freedom of speech. <laughs> now, now that I got you irritated, now I'm going to tell you about, I love this city staff recommendation. I don't believe in young people associating with older people. Uh, if the city can come up with a, a program that can help you teenagers, fine. But if they don't come up with a program, I recommend that the city staff recommendations stand in place. That's my freedom of speech. Okay. My name is Art Huffine. I'm co-chair of the East Precinct Crime Prevention Coalition and the father of two 17-year-old boys. Um, I don't have a lot to say and I'll be brief and hopefully not quite as controversial, but I believe two things in this whole thing are, are really important. I think kids have the right to party, and the second thing is they have the right to party safely. I think that the uh, teen ordinance as it's currently written and that it's only been invoked once in its life is proof that it is not effective. And it seems to me, in what I've been able to read, that the all ages dance ordinance goes too far the other way and that there's a middle ground somewhere that will provide a safe environment to have fun and allow the arts to flourish, because I really do believe that's important. I'm an old gray beard, but I love rock and roll. <laughs> Still love rock and roll. Uh, and uh, you gotta be able to rock. So, and, and I don't know the answer and how you do that, but there's got to be some way to blend some of the good points from the Teen Dan Dance Ordinance, some of the good points from the All Ages Ordinance, and get something that will allow kids to have fun in a constructive way, in a fun way, not all constructive, but in a safe way. And I don't think all ages 
drugs and alcohol mixed with young kids, and those don't make sense to me. So that's my two cents worth. Okay. Good. And uh, then uh, Ron Oldham from the West Seattle uh, Community Partnership, um, and some folks from North, Doug Teal from the North Precinct Citizen Advisory Council, uh, George, George Holsaffel from Hawthorne Hills, and Laurel Hurst. And I don't know what some of you, Doug? Yeah, no, come on up, Doug. And I don't know whether any of you had, were planning to bring anybody else up from your communities. Okay. Okay. My name is Doug Teal. And I think that any society that doesn't honor music doesn't have, isn't much of a society. I love it. I was born in 1938. I watched rock and roll come in, rhythm and blues. Um, so I love music. I love dancing. I have two, uh, two granddaughters, ages uh, seven and almost six, and they've been dancing in my arms since they were two weeks old. <laughs> so dancing and music is, to me, is very, very important. It, it is the spirit of life. And, and uh, I'm here not because I'm, uh, because I'm against dancing. I'm really for it. I'm here because of the same reason a lot of other people are. Uh, because it, it is an issue, uh, an issue of safety. I'm a daddy. I'm a, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a husband. I'm a grandpa. And I love all three of those roles. I wish there were more dances. We need more dances. We need more facilities for kids in this town, regardless of the budget. And there may be ways of raising private monies to make this possible. And, and I'll volunteer to help for that. The, uh, the, what we're doing right now is we seem to have two factions. And I'm sorry we do, because I think that we're more together than we are apart. So I would ask that we, uh, that instead of focusing on our differences, we focus on our similarities, that we drop the swords, that we stop the inflammatory rhetoric, the half and the non-truths, that, uh, that we admit what we know is true and that what is not true is not true, and that the main order of business uh, should, be, uh, should be dances and music uh, for kids and not in an element or environment in which they're jeopardized in any way. Now, I think we can make this possible if we constantly focus on one major issue, and here it is, is that we don't make any, that we make no decisions that are not consistent with what we know is known human behavior. Okay? The current t uh, teenage dance ordinance, I think, is a result of uh, a lot of careful research, whether you like it or not, a lot of it was put into it. it. It takes into account what people do that is harmful to others and ensures as much as is possible that human weaknesses are accounted for to protect younger people who will be attending these dances. Historically, we know that uh, that dances create a very that uh, mixed age dances create a very unsafe environment for youth. Uh, SBD knows this. Uh, emergency hospital rooms know this. A lot of people know that. That's part of the known human behavior, whether you like it or not, is really not the issue. In, the in 1970, I was chair of the Seattle King Con Youth Commission, and I helped defend. Uh, at that time, it was an illegal organization. The Cord Rosenrunga started for runaway kids because at that time, if you were a runaway for whatever reason, uh, you could be housed only 24 hours someplace, and then uh, then you got locked up. And so, I mean, as crazy as that is, that happened to be the law at that time. I'm going to skip over some of the stuff because it has been said so many times. You don't need to hear it again. I want to mention something else to you, <laughs> and I don't want to lose it when I do, so I'll just breathe deeply. Uh, my experience with a lot of these issues go back nearly 40 years, and includes my younger son, who's now dead. He was an alcoholic at the age of 16, and a user of drugs before that. He died of AIDS at age 28. You never quite get over that. Yesterday was Mother's Day. And we cried. He died 11 years ago. I'm sorry, but <clears throat> I think of that when, uh, when I go through these sorts of issues. And I've been involved with kids almost all my life. Anyway, uh, I don't want to see uh, anybody's kids die because we weren't vigilant or because we gave in to collective community pressure from whatever resources. That's what I have to say. 
I love the kids of this town. I love music. I love my granddaughters. And I would hope that uh, collectively we can make this place better and more fun, and we can do it together. And instead of fighting, we join together in common cause and take care of the kids in this town and provide more music and more dancing. Amen. That's it. And for those of you that don't know it, Doug Teal has done that. Um, the most recent case that I know of is, is uh, creating a park in Cowan Park for kids and a safe place for kids to play in that neighborhood. My name is George Holzapfel. I'm the vice president of the Hawthorne Hills Community Council. We're a community of about 1,100 residents in Northeast Seattle. And my purpose for coming this evening is just to ask that we exhibit some common sense um, I think that overall we have a teen dance ordinance right now that is likely too restrictive based upon the fact that there are very few teen dances that are being performed under the ordinance. Having said that, I think we need to use, as I say, common sense and not go overboard the other way. The all ages dance ordinance has lots of problems. Um, it is it, it just a recipe for trouble and I think if we think about it, we can understand why a number of the provisions are just plain wrong. Uh, most parents and all police officers just about can tell you nothing good happens outside the home after 2 a.m. Just doesn't make any sense for the bars to close at 2 a.m. and the uh, dance halls for with children that could be 10, 12, 14 years old to be out partying after that in a public venue. Private venue, if you want to do it in the privacy of your own home, that's your privilege. Um, the other problem that I have is when we, it just doesn't make common sense for 10 to 14 year olds to be partying with 20 to 30 year olds. Um, you know, you just have to read the newspaper every day to see the kind of stuff that's happening to kids in our society. And uh, like Doug and others that have sat here this evening, we're concerned about safety of our children. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention too is that uh, without belaboring all these issues about security and all these other, other matters, is to say that, you know, I have three daughters. I'd like for them to be able to go to a venue where they can dance and have a safe place. If we have the all ages dance ordinances imposed as, as it currently is structured, I'm not gonna let them go down there. It's too dangerous. It's not gonna be a place that's gonna be fun for them. It's gonna be dangerous for them. So I want an ordinance that works. I want an ordinance that's smart. I want an ordinance that is safe for our children and for our teenagers. And uh, right now, the all age dance ordinance just doesn't do it. So as far as the uh, as far as my community organization goes, I want uh, Council Member Pageler and the other council members to know that we strongly support the city staff recommendations and that we hope that we can find common ground to end up with a, uh, an ordinance that works for our children and for all the people in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Ron Oldham and I'm president of the West Seattle Community Safety Partnership. Uh, one of the nice things about going last on the program is uh, you don't have to say everything because a lot of people already said it for you. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say ditto to a lot of the stuff I've already heard, but try to give you a few points here. Somebody in the back of the room earlier said, isn't that what parents are for? Well, it certainly is, and, and George's comment uh, reflects that as well. He, he would not allow his children to go somewhere where he didn't feel they would be safe or protected. However, as he also said, you have only to go to the media, the newspapers, the TV, to see instances where children do not receive the benefit of parents who care about them enough to make them safe, or for some reason cannot control them in a, in a way that uh, keeps them in a safe uh, environment. I think, therefore, the city has to play a role and has to limit and to uh, control the circumstances under which events go on, just as they do for many other things. I don't think that's unreasonable. So I would like to do a couple things real quick and then I'd like to have someone come up from the audience uh, to give you some facts because he's very uh, well related with them. This is a public safety issue. It's not, as the courts have so rightly indicated, a freedom of speech issue. We ought not to be driven by folks who have potential economic gain at stake in this uh, situation. The larger community has an interest here and it needs to be uh, heeded. Any new ordinance should, I think, pay attention to these points as some of the other speakers have said. We need to strengthen, not weaken, the guarantees of public safety to the, what can be the most vulnerable members of our society. If you have a no limit age to get into some of these events, you all know good and well somebody's older brother or sister 
who's been charged with the responsibility of caring for that eight, nine, or 10-year-old is gonna drag them along to that event, and they have no place in that environment where you have older adults, some of whom may be just fine and some of whom may be not. I think that you need to consider the physical consequences to the city and the community. Folks, this doesn't come free when you do stuff like this. There are costs to be paid. If the new rules make public events more frequent, who is going to pay for the public safety guarantees? Well, I, I know who's going to pay for them, and, and I want to share that cost. Consider the potential drain on already meager police resources, especially if an event that's very large gets out of hand. As someone else in the panel earlier said, the police resources are not going to be there for the rest of us when that happens. They're going to be wherever that venue is. To me, the strongest point of this whole thing is a minimum age requirement. I don't know what that is. I'm not going to tell you I know what it is. I know that a, not my nine-year-old grandson sure ought not to be able to go to something that's designed for teens and older adults. He has no maturity, no ability at his, this point in his life to make the decisions that he needs to make to be safe. So we need some kind of a lower limit, and activities for children below that limit need to be in another venue and another resource. I think we need to charge a reasonable yet realistic fee for licenses or permits or whatever we end up calling them. I really don't have an interest in subsidizing a rave. I don't go to it. My children are grown. They're not going to go to it. And I think this is a case where user fees need to be applied appropriately and reasonably. We need to have strict qualifications for the people who are given licenses or permits. They need not to be people of poor character and criminal records and criminal histories who have demonstrated that their maturity and their judgment is wanting. I think, uh, you know, one of the things I believe in is insurance. And it costs me an arm and a leg for the insurance that I have for my work and my business and my home. And I have no problem when asking a private uh, promoter of an event to get a bond or insurance that covers the liability that may occur on the premises when their events are going on. I think we need to enforce fire, health, and life safety codes strictly, and we need to revoke licenses where violations occur in the venues that are, that are not properly, uh, are not safe, and are not uh, properly, uh, I can't think of the word I want, but you know what I mean. Um, security. Uh, the draft I saw of last year's all age dance ordinance talked about private security. Well, I can tell you in my career in the past, and I am semi-retired, I had occasion to hire both off-duty police officers and private security. And folks, you don't get much when you hire private security. I'm going to tell you that right now. Now, there are people who disagree with that, and that's fine, and there may be some notable exceptions, but you get what you pay for. And I think that any ordinance that we pass needs to have a requirement of off-duty police officers who, by the way, you get through the Seattle Police Guild office. It's not hard to do. There are always officers willing to work and make extra money. Finally, um, I think we need to strengthen the penalties for violations of the terms of whatever ordinance is developed. And they should be at least misdemeanors and not infractions. This is too serious a business to do otherwise. Um, in summation, I would say to you, there's a lot of diversity in this room, both in age, culture, ethnicity, and any other thing you can name. And the important thing is that that diversity brings a lot of potential to this. And I would suggest that as my previous, uh, my predecessors here have said, bringing together that diversity can result in a, an ordinance and restrictions and uh, freedoms that make this work for everybody. The last thing I would like to do is ask um, Sergeant Dan Besty from the South Precinct if he would come up and just share with you for a couple minutes some of his experiences. He has uh, apparently been the, one of the officers in the South Precinct who has worked uh, a lot of the uh, raves in the West Seattle area and other places. Uh, Sergeant Besty. First of all, I'd like to put a little caveat on it, but I'm not uh, speaking uh, for the department's uh, policy on uh, the teen dance ordinance. Uh, I'll give a little of uh, my personal reflection on it and what I've seen. I've been working uh, 
in the music scene, uh, starting at the Seattle Center. I was assigned there back in the 70s. I came out of the department in 1970. I've seen all types of music. Uh, we talk about uh, the raves or teen dances of today, and we distinguish them differently than rock concerts. Uh, people ask me, would you let your own child go to a rave? Uh, the answer is no. Would I let her go to a heavy metal rock concert? The answer is no. There's as much or more drugs at a heavy metal rock concert as there is at any rave. Uh, that's an all age thing. The difference is that in each of those events, there are often police officers working. If you think a police officer doesn't change your behavior by your mere presence, think about how you drive down the road. And when you have a state trooper behind you, you drive differently than if you have a security guard driving behind you. I think the answer is probably that it does change behaviors. The race scene I have, for any of those that are interested after this, I can show you pictures of uh, just uh, where officers are walking through a rave uh, and what we collect in an average rave uh, in drugs and narcotics paraphernalia. Now having said that, uh, the teen dance ordinance as it now stands, uh, if I was going to say uh, that if I thought it was effective, I would say fine. Uh, it's a de facto ban, and it doesn't work. Uh, and I think changes are made, but it seems to me that we were either on one side or the other. It's a de facto ban or no control whatsoever. Uh, I work at these raves uh, frequently. Uh, young children, 10, 11 years old, come up uh, frequently with an older brother or sister. Uh, they want to want to come in to these events. There are uh, predators at, at these events. When the police are there, they're held in check. Uh, now, I don't believe that it necessarily is right for this to go on. However, the fact is that whether you, whether you ban them, continue with the teen dance ordinance, or you put in an all-age dance ordinance, uh, these events are going to go on. Uh, the question is whether there'll be officers there. When there's an overdose, uh, clubs with private security, the last thing they want to do is call the police or the fire uh, to get help for that person because that's going to be a black mark on them. They pull them out in the alley, they get their friends to take them home. Uh, when there's police officers there, uh, they will call for an aid card. They'll see that they get help. I myself have given mouth to mouth resuscitation with another officer for several minutes and saved a young man's life at a rage. So uh, I've been there. Uh, I'll probably re be retiring soon, and it doesn't really affect me, but it does affect the young people. I believe what you have to do is, is have some restrictions. The absolute essential restrictions are that you have police officers. Private security, especially at raves, has historically uh, not even been paid. Uh, they have the alcohol and drug concession, they don't need money. They take money from, they take drugs from the kids, give them to the people that are allowed to sell the drugs, and split the profits. Uh, now, now people could argue with me, but I know that's true. I could name clubs, but I won't. Uh, that, that, have, that, that have gone on, and one of them was frequently shut down for just that particular type of activity. So, uh, now those are facts. You have to have a re-entry fee. If you don't, uh, all the police in the world inside uh, will have no effect on the drug taking and the alcohol because they will all be going back out to their cars. Why is it necessary to go to leave the party four or five times? unless you want to go out and drink and have drugs. Uh, and if you look at the price, like the average rave uh, now starts at $20. Uh, the cost of security is 50 cents on that, on that $20 probably for police officers, a difference than uh, non-police security. So I don't, I don't believe that it's a, a, uh, a major uh, expense. Some of the smaller ones, there are team dances. There are city dances. Vera Project is, a, is an outstanding uh, new thing. I, I hope that this council uh, funds it. I know I'm on the uh, Arts and Music Advisory Council, uh, and I tend, would like to uh, continue on there and, and help mold something that will work, but uh, make children safe. Nothing else. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's uh, <laughs> thank the panelists. And we'll reconvene at 5 after 8, and we'll start through the list of folks that have signed up. Uh, probably can't take you all before the, the building closes, but we'll have your names for the 
for the uh, final uh, hearing. And pent, pent up comments. So we'll, um, uh, we'll give you two minutes each and get through as many of you as, as we can. And then um, if you signed up and your name and address or email is, el is legible, uh, I'll make sure that you get the notice of the uh, public hearings that uh, Nick Licata holds in, in his committee as he considers this. So let's start with Ralph Warren uh, and then uh, Lauren Totsi. And, and if you'll come up to that mic and speak in this direction, that would be great. Okay, well, I'll just say really quick that uh, I wish we had more time because we've been involved with, or I have been involved with, working with a couple different groups since the first Music and Youth Task Force uh, hearings and ta uh, on, on this issue to change the Teen Dance Ordinance from the perspective of the electronic music and the hip hop community and supporting nonprofit organized small, relatively small events. There's a lot, I'd like to speak mostly about facts though and say that I hope everyone here, especially the people that support the All Ages Dance Ordinance, reads it. We handed out a flyer today that basically said we would prefer to see permits, not licenses, because licenses bring in a lot of prejudice and a lot of uh, bias, which the flyer goes into specifically. Um, uh, one of the specific things that has been passed over by people supporting the OIH Dance Ordinance is how criminal background checks, since they look at past behavior, unlike permits, don't make an event more safe in the current frame of reference. And the criminal background checks specifically geared to uh, the drug uh, uh, possession charges in the past have been shown by statistics to be real, uh, racially biased from detention all the way to sentencing. We need to look at making the permits stronger and not looking at extraneous factors which are essentially political hype for the AADO. Uh, so I hope you really look at it carefully. And I would hope that we would get a chance in the future, at the next level, to have as equal representation with other groups that were up here today. Uh, I do want to also point out, from my own experience, I don't go to the large venues anymore that are permissible under the Teen Dance Ordinance, like the uh, officer spoke about that he works at, because the Teen Dance Ordinance has done nothing to make them better. In fact, they've allowed corruption to continue. Okay, time's up. Can you finish up? And so I, th I would hope that we would look at this in terms of reality and get, I, I, first of all, I'd like to thank you, Margaret, for doing this. And yeah. right. um, I want to say one thing in closing, and that's that a good thing that happened today was that people were starting to speak more about their experience, but they're still talking at each other and not with each other. And I would hope that the city council, city council uh, rather than rushing this through, we start to get people talking with each other for real for the first time. Okay, Lauren Totsi, followed by Kathleen Wagner. Lauren left. Okay, is Kathleen Wagner here? Yeah. Please, please give us. I had an outburst before, okay? My name is Yana Bakris, and about this teen dance ordinance, okay, what those guys were saying last time, I think they've forgotten what it's like to be a kid. If some kid is going to go out to a club and going to get drunk, he could just do it at some party instead. I mean, have you ever been on the Ave? Have you ever been on the Ave and some drunken frat boy is walking by? He's like, he's like, hey, sweetie, or whatever, you know? You know, it happens all the time. You can't say, yeah, there's going to be the. How many of you people who have been saying, oh, look, the neighborhoods, blah, 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 it's the kids who are doing it. That has nothing to do with the teen dance ordinance. What the hell are you talking about? That's outside. I, that's outside. I mean, I mean, it's not like the teenagers are the ones outside making all the noise. It's like there's people in their 20s and 30s and older. And you know what? It shouldn't even, it shouldn't even matter that much because basically a club... It's concerned about, you know, like, you're saying, like, profits and shit, but they don't want to lose their liquor license because they make a lot of money off of that. They, they do. Anyways, I don't really have that much left to say. Okay. Then we will hear from...
Kathleen Wagner, followed by June Zendona. And if you signed up and don't want to speak, just uh, let us know, because there's lots of people behind you. Uh, my name is Kathleen Wagner. I have two children, 21 and 18. And I think the teen dance ordinance, as it presently is sitting, is just way too restrictive. I would like to see the city council work out something more on the line of the all ages dance thing. I don't object to most of the city staff recommendations. Um, I think the, but I think that it should be an all ages thing. I don't believe that all people over 21 are necessarily predators. I think the. the only way they say maybe one percent of the population and I think if my 21 year old daughter who's a national merit scholar working on her master's degree in English wants to go to an all ages dance thing I think she'd be a wonderful influence. Thank you. June Zandona followed by Mark Allen and then uh, Annabella Serra. Yes. Uh, hello, I'm June Zandona, and I'm 17, so I'm representing the youth. And um, I believe it was the city attorney who said that things that happen after 2 a.m. and involve teens, they must be bad. And, and I rebuked that statement because um, I'm a good person. I'm sober, I don't drink, I'm a 3.9 GPA student, and I attend electronic music, music events every weekend. And the thing is, is that we come in contact with adults at school, at church, going to the store, going to the library, and you can't always buffer us. What you can do is instill morals in us, and we like to be protected. We don't mind being protected, but we don't like being stereotyped against or accused of being deviants. And um, I have a wide group of friends, very diverse, from 14, 15 to 24, 27. Sometimes I go to events with my mother, sometimes I go with older siblings. And I think it's kind of a violation of my rights to assemble to say that I'm 17, I can't go dancing with a friend who is 19 or 20 or 21. And so, um, overall, I think the AADO and the TDO are grossly biased. Um, Anti-youth, they spread the generation gap and they're mainly ineffective. So I'd like to see that um, a youth advisory board, some young people get involved and help work with the council to uh, improve this, both of them. They're not working. Thank you very much. Thank Again, and you're, and you are? Um, Annabelle is here. You're Annabelle. Okay. Yeah. Um, I live in Pioneer Square. I'm a mother, and I'm also in the entertainment industry. One of the things that I have a problem with, um, with the old agents ordinance, is I think it's extremely flawed in many ways. First, it makes the teens, it totally patronizes them as idiots who cannot take care of themselves, who cannot think for themselves. What? It also puts a lot of the responsibility on people who should not be worrying about it because there are more important things to do. It relies on the police being available to take care of calls because people are being dumped in the alley because they're too drunk. And I'm not talking about teens, I'm talking about people over 21 right now who are doing that. Um, so I think the problem is that it's focusing on the bad is of the bad um, and not trying to support the good in it. I think the all ages ordinance should be go back to the drawing board, I think you youngsters should write letters and be heard instead of dancing because what that does, it, it just, nobody's gonna remember that except for, oh, a cute little dance party, but the message is not gonna come across. Um, as a resident, I really would like to get some sleep and I like for the music to be in the clubs and for everybody to have good time. That's why I live there because I like the vibrant community that Pioneer Square is. But I did not enjoy seeing some murder during Mardi Gras. I will hope that I never see that again. Um, so I hope you guys understand that, you know, we're not trying to tell people that they shouldn't party, but they should party safely. And right now, the main concern is that the clubs are looking at a for-profit and not have a responsibility. They do not bring the venues, they do not bring the bands that you guys like because you don't pay enough money because you do not drink alcohol. So maybe we force the clubs to have an, um, you know, an old dance venue with no alcohol, all ages. It doesn't matter. 
you guys deserve the funds, but you also, and all of us deserve the safety. Thank um, you. We pay a lot of taxes for it, so. Thank you. Is Rebecca Salinas here? Uh, then Laura Wells, followed by Lois uh, Graham and Simpson. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight, to everybody who stayed. My name is Laura Wells, and I am a resident of Seattle and the mother, proud mother, of a 19-year-old um, Vera member. Um, I can really identify with you Pioneer Square and downtown residents. Events in my neighborhood regularly attract people from outside our neighborhood. They come to party. Their children mix with adults. Alcohol, although not allowed, is freely consumed. I live in the shadow of Husky Stadium. and this stuff is just boggling my mind. But I w have a few observations I would like mm -hmm. to share with you tonight. I do know from my experience with the people at the Vera Project and with the, in the years that my son's been involved, that these are people who care deeply mm -hmm. about the young people for whom they advocate and for whom they work. Many of these, the adults that are involved in the Vera Project have full-time jobs doing other things and there they are every weekend working with these kids to develop leadership and music. Many of them are involved in the discussions about these ordinances. I don't know which one's good. I don't know which one's bad. I don't know which one's better. But I do know that we need to trust the people that are well informed on the issues and know the young people to make good decisions on their behalf. I also believe that no rules are going to solve all the problems. And in mm -hmm. fact, sometimes I think when we have more and more rules, we give ourselves a false sense of security. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that my son was probably at more risk of predators during his, his years in Catholic school than he ever was at a dance in Seattle. There have been a lot of very intelligent things said here tonight by people from both sides. I urge the city council, and I know there are a lot of intelligent people in the city council too, to engage the best thinking of both sides. I am very convinced we can come up with a win-win solution that does not, that, that is not based on hysterica, hysteria, and bringing in issues that really don't have anything to do with this, but push hot buttons in people. There were a lot of irrelevant things, I believe, talked about here tonight. So as I said, let's rise above the hysteria, let's come up with a win-win solution, and let's trust that really, ultimately, everybody wants the same thing. For you all to have a whole lot of fun with whoever you want to have it with, wherever you want to have it. Thank you. Lois Gammon Simpson, followed by Ginger McDonald. Are either of those people here? Uh, Lori Amsterburton.
Britney Spears' In Sync are almost always all ages shows. However, a lot of local artists suffer from this ordinance because a large number of their fans are not allowed to see their shows. Also, a large number of new artists aren't old enough to see their shows. Many artists aren't old enough. Many, many new artists are underage people. Um, a, a big thing I uh, noticed with the readmittance fee is if a teenager can afford drugs in the first place, they can probably afford the readmittance fee. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I noticed that Ginger had a written statement, and those of you that have your remarks in writing, you know, be sure that what they get into the into the box with the with the blue forms, um, and preferably with your name on it, so we can make sure that we contact you before the the public hearing. Um, Lori Amster Burton, followed by Alex and Jeff Thomas. I'm a Seattle school teacher, and so I am very concerned about the safety of the young people in our community. I feel that the teen dance ordinance, under the guise of protecting young people, is actually really punishing them by restricting their options and by leading people, as some of the people we've heard this evening, to blame teenagers for problems that they are not primarily responsible for. I think that the teen dance ordinance is something that discourages young people from being more involved in the community, um, from being more part of the life of Seattle which is something we need to encourage. I'm glad to hear so many people this evening expressing how much they care about young people and how much they want to help and support them. There are a lot of things they can do by getting involved in schools, getting involved in helping poor and homeless youth, getting involved with projects like the Vera Project, by uh, supporting and spending all this time and energy fighting for the teen dance ordinance. I don't think they're improving life in Seattle for young people. And I really encourage the city council to look at passing the all ages dance ordinance, which I think is at least an improvement because I think it will encourage young people to be more involved in the community, improve their lives and help to improve um, the community of Seattle for people of all ages. Alex and Jeff Thomas followed by it's Stacy Retz. Retz are Steve. I'm sorry. <laughs> that that's an E in there. Okay. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Jeff Thomas. Um, I've heard a number of interesting comments tonight. I think the best was that everybody in this room needs to be working together to find your common ground and not your differences. I would encourage the city council to pass an ordinance that makes the events and venues via economically viable. If you effectively legislate them out of existence, uh, everything that was said tonight won't be worth anything. There are a lot of good kids out there. They deserve a safe and open place where they can go have fun. Thank you. My name is Alex Thomas, and I'm uh, Jeff's son. I'm a musician in the local music scene, and as a musician, these laws are killing the art scene. We have no venues. We have no audience, no advertising. The TDO has made it almost impossible to express myself as an artist, and also it does not prevent any home to, and I'm 16, if I want to go get drunk, I can get drunk almost any time I want. It's called party, ah, excuse me. It's called parties. It's called, you know, you can go mingle with adults who are intoxicated any time you want. These teen dance ordinances do not stop it. It's called parenting that stops it. My parents taught me, don't drink, don't smoke pot, I don't, I'm clean. And that's the point on a drive home, that it's, is this a, a totally redundant legislation? Um, more venues, 
the more things to do the, on not drinking, on not drugs, the less drinking is going to be, period. And it doesn't matter with legislation. Steve Retz, followed by Jeremy Hauck. I'm a high school teacher of government and politics, so I do understand the need for dialogue. And I know that anytime we're going to deal with issues surrounding the PDO or the AADO, it's going to require that. It frustrates me a lot, though, to see that most of the foreign panelists and people who are in power, most of the people who are the foreign panelists and people in power, they went away. They're not here to dialogue with us now. We shouldn't wonder why our youth are frustrated. It's pretty clear. I also think it's very unfair to sum up our kids with the Beastie Boys lyric about fighting for your right to party. That demonizes kids in a way that is absolutely unfair. Um, some people may not be old enough or may not remember or may not care, but about 20 years ago in the punk scene there was a movement called Straight Edge. And there are plenty of kids out there who are happy to not drink and drug at shows. I think that demonizing kids and the adults who go to all ages shows uh, makes the issue of all ages shows a stand in for the other real ills in our society. And I don't think that's right. I think it's totally unfounded to conflate all ages shows and the issue with. Mardi Gras violence and violence in Pioneer Square in general. Bad behavior of drinking age bar patrons. That's not the all ages issue. Let's get clear about that, people. Um, we heard from a couple of teens earlier who are not looking for drugs or sex at all ages shows. You're looking at a guy who's going to see bands at all ages shows. I'm not offering drugs and I'm not preying on your kids. My best friend is also a teacher. She's not interested in the music. She doesn't want to take her kid to the shows. She's happy to have me take them. It's not pathological. <laughs> we heard earlier, we also heard about shameless greed and stupidity. Yeah, big problems in our society and exploitation of youth, you bet. Troubling problems. Um, I don't hear anybody saying anything about worrying about clothing corporations like The Gap and Old Navy who want to take their money from their kids in much greater proportions than what they're going to pay to go to all ages shows. Okay. Young people do need outlets. Okay. Um, I'm Jeremy Hawkin. I'm actually in his class, but. Uh, <laughs> Was this a homework assignment? <laughs> yeah, no, no. This just it kind of pisses me off that people come up here and, and talk about like Pioneer Square violence and and noise and like how, how their neighborhoods are being disrupted when that has nothing to do with teenagers and that has nothing at all to do with the teen dance ordinance and it just gets people to support their side that you know it's not even the issue and as far as as far as protecting kids go which is really what this should be about and offering us things to do that you know are semi-constructive you don't you don't do that by just separating us from our friends and our peers because they're not a danger to us and we can pretty much take care of ourselves there's a, lot of, there's a lot of people that underestimate how good our judgment is, and that's not really fair, and that doesn't deal with the issue. And the issue really is giving us something to do. And the teen dance ordinance, the all ages dance ordinance, they don't really do anything. I'm not really sure which one's better. They both seem to be pretty bad. But, uh, <laughs> but we just, what we need to do is we need to figure out a good compromise, because we got people on, on both extremes that really aren't being constructive. Like, dancing thing that was that was cool and all but then you make our side look look stupid and look like all we want to do is get attention and that's really not what we want we want to actually we want to actually prove a point and the point is is that there are more logical ways to do this and actually separating us from our friends isn't the one Jack Caldwell followed by Paul Bascom No, Jack Caldwell, Paul Bascom, uh, Kai Predmore, or K.A. Predmore, Sarah Feldman. Come on. 
Any of those people here wish to make a statement? Okay, Ms. Predmore. There need to be more projects like the Bear Project that help support local groups of teens going to look for places to go. Because if you eliminate the age, if you put in an age requirement, that's pushing all those people other places to go and do the same exact things. It's not eliminating the problem. And that therefore creates more hostility between people the age of over 21 and people under 21. There's going to be more hostility if you do that. People are going to go other places, and where is there going to be help then? At least at these venues that have underage people with older age people, even if the security is not as great as it could be. Even if we do have police officers, there is some level of security there that will help you when you need it. Um, when you make rules and when you outlaw alcohol, I don't know a single one of you that can say because someone is under the age of 21 doesn't know someone else that is still drinking that is under the age of 21. The problem is still there and it is not going to go away. What we need to do, if we need new roads, if we need something like that, we find a way to come up with the money for it. We need to do the same things for our teens and for the youth. Otherwise, it's not going to be done. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. My name is Kirby Predmore, and I'm the uh, chair of the South Precinct Advisory Council. So I get to hear a lot of horror stories about uh, where uh, most of the raves or the, uh, what happens at uh, some of the raves. The truth is, how many people in here know what a Gretsch guitar is? How about a Viking, a Gretsch Viking? Well, I used to hammer on one, <laughs> and, it, and it was fun. I had a lot of fun. Uh, we played at the uh, Seattle Arena, what used to be Battle of the Bands. And we were kind of honeycombed together, and everybody was appreciating what, what these artists were trying to, to do. A great feeling, you know? To this day, I don't dance. I love to perform. I don't dance. I love music, I don't dance. Like I said, the horror stories that you hear, there are a lot of success stories. These nonprofit venues, I think they're great. The opportunities should always be there. When I was younger, they were there. Sometimes I had to travel a little bit, they were there. But it's the horror stories. Pulls us in, makes us err, maybe, on the side of caution and safety. It's that 75 mile an hour speed limit. Oh no, we want to do 90. It's the no parking zone. I'll only be a minute. You see where I'm going? No? Have I lost everybody? My apologies. <laughs> the truth is, when I uh, I played in a band and my appreciation of music was uh, a lot higher, that um, there were the events, the venues available. It was the birth of rock and roll. Okay. Everybody was in. Put a band out of the kids on the block. Better finish up. There are a lot of people okay. waiting in line. The truth is, the uh, the city has put a lot of thought into this. Their recommendations over TDO. All ages does not work, or we'd be putting you out as parents, put you out on the street at eight. Okay. Okay. There is an age where you get to start making a lot of decisions on your own. And it's kind of scary, but it will happen. But there has to be some guidance, speed limits, and 
no parking zones. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Kirk, Mr. Uh, Fred Moore. Um, we heard from Jeffrey Thomas, uh, Susan Harmon, followed by Forrest Pfizer. Hi, I'm Susan Harmon. I'm facilitator for Powerful Partners for Powerful Youth. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, if I knew this is how you got kids engaged, I'd have done this a long time ago. <laughs> because I, I'd like to see young people get more involved with their government, more involved with the community, and do a lot of things, do it safely. I don't think we have to look at this as sides, this side or that side. Um, the ordinance we have now, it's not really good. And you guys are right when you say that we, the elders, are failing you. We're not allowing you the space to be who you are and to participate in this community. And that's, that's the truth. But the ordinance that's being proposed isn't a good one. There has to be something other than all or nothing. And I think that if people do come together and work on doing something that works, we can have something that'll be good for everyone, more venues for youth, I think the Vera Project, and by the way, I do want to offer my support uh, that they do get funding, you know, <laughs> because it's, we already have the city gutting programs that work for kids. I'd like to see, have seen Safe Futures get some money. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things that we need to do in this city for our young people. We don't need to subsidize promoters, and that's a big concern. There's already problems in the adult clubs on the way security is handled or not handled. My adult daughter experienced things that weren't very great. I'm not going to take up a bunch of time talking about my own personal experience on that. But I want to see kids be safe, and I want them to see be active. And we can work together to make this happen. Thank you, Susan. Is there a Forrest Pfizer? Uh, I think this is Karis Jackson, SYPP. Jennifer Bisson. Okay, Ryan Berg or Beryl? No? Um, oh, Bill Southern from Seattle Schools. He's not, I don't think he wants to make a statement. Arlie Karstens. Followed by uh, Maria McElroy, or Marika McElroy. So uh, I have little patience for this process anymore because I've been coming to meetings like this since I was about 12 years old. The TDO was uh, enacted when I was a little kid and I've spent just about half my life fighting against it. The point that I would like to make is that um, when I was about 15 years old, I started playing in punk rock bands. I'm now a grown man. I've toured the United States in excess of a dozen times. I've toured across Europe. The entire reason that I am the person that I am today is because of my music community in this town. And that is a fact. Like, that can't be disputed. So when you have people like, I don't know, like people from Pioneer Square talking about Mardi Gras, or people talking about adults being predators, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I'm a, I'm a grown adult now. And the reason that I'm a compassionate person, the reason that I'm an artistic person is because of my music community. That is the reason that I am here today, because I still give a goddamn about my music community. So the point, the point that I want to make is that we need to stop blurring the line between what's happening at adult clubs and what's happening at all ages clubs. That is the one thing that I keep hearing over and over again. There are so many adults who have been on this stacked panel today talking about problems. The problems that they keep talking about are things that are happening in adult clubs. And you need to check yourself if you think that anybody who's working at a for-profit venue doesn't care about kids. That's ridiculous. They're, there's not just a pack of predators and parasites running around thinking they can make a buck off of kids. 
These people, that's ridiculous. So keep in mind that if you start talking in, um, how should we say, uh, generalizations, then you demonize everyone in this community. And that's ludicrous because the majority of people in this community do care about kids. But we need to all care about kids. Thank you. Thank you. Was Marika, Marika McElroy here? Pam Eaton Ford? Okay. Yeah, followed by Pam Eaton Ford, and then Cheryl uh, Brush. Hi. Um, I'm 17, so I go to all ages shows. Um, there's been a lot of talk on this panel about the demonization of mixing ages at all ages shows, and I've been going to these shows since I was 14, and I've never really experienced, had any bad experiences because there were people over 20 there. I mean, I've experienced harassment from adults on the streets, in parks, but I don't experience it at all ages shows. I think that a lot of people who are here talking about how terrible it is to mix ages don't go to all ages shows. So I don't really think it's fair for them to characterize what it's like there. Um, I also okay. hear this demonization for the for-profit music industry, and I don't think that's very fair, because, I mean, like somebody mentioned big shows like Britney Spears and NSYNC. I mean, they're, those tickets are like $50. I mean, that's like, that's for profit. When we're talking about shows at Graceland, DVA, Showbox, I mean, that's like an $8 show. They're not making that much money. But it's, I mean, teenagers, we're big consumers of music. It's like, I think we're some of the top consumers of music in the country. And I think the music industry realizes that, and I don't think that they think they kind of want to protect that, make the shows good places to go, make kids want to come. I think that they create a good environment for them because I've had nothing but good things to say about it. I don't think the demonization of the for-profit music industry is very fair at all because I've gone to for-profit shows and they've been fine. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Hi, I'm Pam Eaton Ford and I'm a mom. My daughters are 20 and 23 and I would love to go to all ages shows with them. Um, my oldest daughter was a musician. She could only play in bars and then supposedly leave out the back door. Um, all ages shows would, or minimum age, I don't want to say all ages, but minimum age, there, there should be a limit, but I see nothing wrong with going to the same music event as my daughters do. Um, what is the difference between a concert and a dance? Is it because there's no alcohol served? So then have dances with no alcohol, which is the same as a concert, which we can all go to and enjoy the music. And I have been to a Beastie Boys concert. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I wore earplugs. Um, but you know, we should come up to an agreeable venues. Um, I asked my 20 year old daughter her opinions of this and her concerns were more adequate facilities, mm -hmm. security inside, not just outside, um, water. I said, go to the bathroom and get water. It says, you wouldn't go in the bathroom. It's not clean. Those types of concerns were her concerns, not that she was going to be um, abducted by her 26-year-old boyfriend who's not allowed to go to the same shows. It's easier for her to get into a bar with him than him to go to an all-ages show with her. Okay? So, yeah, we're not all. Um, I volunteer with the local high school band. I'm a photographer for musicians. Um, I go to shows. Um, and enjoy music, and I, so do my daughters, and I think we should all be able to go. Thank you. Uh, Carol, I think it's Br Cheryl Brush uh, from South Myrtle. Um, Kirsten Larson, Alex Frisk, Officer Cookie with SPD, are you planning to say something? KM Fort, uh, Tina Bika. Okay. Glenn McGilvra. Glenn was here, but he's not. Ann Magyar. Did you want to say something? 
and then Jeff Betker. So uh, just real quickly, I wanted to mention that um, I'm a teacher and a mentor, and I find it hard to believe that we salute people like me for working with teenagers all the time. But as an avid music fan, I, I cannot go to shows with them. And so um, just again, urge, urge the city council to look at this and, and look at other organizations that do have teen events like the YMCA and Big Brother, Big Sister that we all salute and no one would get up here and talk bad about because we all think it's wonderful for these people to be a positive influence on the teenagers. And we've seen many adults get up here and talk about how they work with teenagers and they care about the kids. And it's just inane to not allow us to be a positive influence at the shows. And I think you're really not looking at the community that develops when you have these shows and you have a music community that are all there to enjoy the music. And um, like many people said before, stop harping on the hysterical, um, extreme bad events that sometimes occur. Because they happen everywhere. And there's plenty of places in Seattle that we can go to see kids and adults doing things that are getting them in trouble because they have nowhere else to go. You know, if you go to the Ave or go to the Broadway, there's lots of people out on the street that would probably be a little better off at a show. Yeah. We're being hustled because I think that you know, the, the, this uh, hall ho closes at 9 instead of 10. Malik... What, what's the, they said nine. All right. Um, Jeff Betker followed by Bubba Jennings. Anybody? Um, Jan Dowers. Ben Lidgus. Go ahead. Good. My name's Jan Dowers, and I'm here as a parent. Um, and I'm here as a parent who goes to all ages shows with their kid. And what better way to keep track of what your kids are doing than to actually go out with them and enjoy what's going on? And under these regulations, my daughter would have to go by herself. And, you know, that somehow have a feeling that it's a safer environment for our kids to have it be an all encompassing venue that both parents and kids can enjoy together. Mm -hmm. And I've been going to All Ages shows for many years with her. I've never, ever, ever witnessed anything that any of the panelists were talking about. There are no drugs. There are no alcohol events. Um, you're confusing what these kids are interested in with raves and what the vision of raves are. And there may be some children in our community that do go to raves. And, you know, the, that's not actually the safest environment. But what's going on in, in Seattle predominantly is kids want places to hear music. Mm -hmm. They are obsessed with music. They become musicians. They play music. They follow their bands. They have internet chat sites just about bands. They can spend hours doing nothing but talking about their favorite bands. And I've never, ever witnessed any of the things that any of the panelists were talking about at any of the all ages venues that I've gone to. Um, it, it's kind of stealing the thunder to be talking last because I do agree with pretty much what everybody else is saying. The kids are not the ones on the street. The noise coming out of the clubs bothering the neighborhoods, those aren't the kids. Those are problems that every city, every metropolitan area has, and it's really unfair that we're blaming that on our kids. Yeah, Ms. Dowers, the, the teen dance ordinance does allow parents. There's, there's no restrictions on parents going to all ages events. So. I, I believe, you can, you can check it. Okay. Yeah. Ben, ben Lidgus, and then we'll have to we'll close it out. Ben is not there? Okay. The, the age requirement, if you, if you look on your matrix, yeah, it's there in the matrix for the teen dance, dance ordinance. Thank you very much. If I've got your address or your email address, I'll make sure you get an invitation to the public hearing.
Appreciate your input.